and not have Financial Peace University go through you. Does that make sense? So do it again and again until you get it, until it gets you. Same with emotionally healthy relationships. How many of you have been through EHR? See your hands, all right? We got a, I think we took about 50 people through it in uh, January. And that starts up again on Wednesday night. So if you have the books already, great. You can come. It's going to be in the upper room. And that will meet on Wednesday night. It starts this week, right? Yes. yes. Starts this week. I'm thinking, wow, we're in September already. Um, so... Come if you don't have books. It's a small fee to get the two books, and you can get those uh, afterwards. Do we have the uh, House of Blessing picture, the freezer pictures? Look at that. You are amazing, Scott. Thank you so much. Now, a few weeks ago, we took up an offering, and our goal was $700 to buy a new freezer for the House of Blessing, which is our collective community food pantry over at Harvest Assembly, behind Harvest Assembly. And you were so incredibly generous, we collected over $1,200, and we sent that over. Yeah, give the Lord a a thank. He gets all the glory and all the praise. We simply are the vessels through which he flows. Could we just say that together? I'm the, ve- I'm the vessel through which he flows. I'm the vessel through which he flows. Sometimes it's finances. Sometimes it's a prophetic word. Sometimes it's a word of encouragement or a word of comfort, just like we experienced here. But what happens if we all keep our fists closed and our mouths closed? We miss being a conduit. So we sent the money over to Harvest, and they went to the store to get these freezers that they, or freezer that they wanted, and the guy said, how much money do you have? And she said, well, we have $1,200. And he says, I'm going to give you three freezers delivered to the House of Blessing for the money that we were planning on spending for one freezer. So give the Lord a thanks for that. (laughs) Brand new freezers that are, uh, I just got the note from them, over 12,000 people that we fed last year through the ministry of the House of Blessing. Sometimes it's 12, sometimes it's 15. It just, you know, it depends. But people are being touched and ministered to. On another note on that, uh, the 5th Precinct of the Police Department just called us all together again, Captain um, Mike Cole, and we had a packed room at the Police Department. Their conference room was packed full of people saying, we want pastors and leaders we want to holistically minister to our community in an even greater way than we are now. That includes the House of Blessing. It includes the class, Churches Loving and Serving Schools, which we're a part of, the After School Urban Outreach Centers. It includes the Serve the City, Adopt the Neighborhood program. CAST, uh, Chesapeake Area Shelter Team for the Homeless. All of these, the mentoring programs. And the police department said... We see these things, and we can do more together than we can as individuals. Now, we know that, but the the churches have been called together by our city leaders to do this. I don't think you heard that. The churches have been called together by the city leaders to do this. Are we, as the body of Christ, going to do what the city sees as the needs of our community? We are empowered with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to do this. And we are on board. And I want to thank you for just your faithful, faithful, faithful people. You're you're getting it. The city's getting it. And I better look and see if I have any more announcements before I start preaching. Okay. All right. That's it. Maybe. Did I forget anything, anybody? All right. So, I love this word, intentional, that is behind me on the backdrop. Thank you, Dana, for putting uh, all those letters together and doing all of that. Um, We appreciate that. I, um, I want us to think for a moment, what this word, intentional, means to you right now.
Maybe jot it down. Maybe there's an area in your life where you see, man, I just, I need to be more intentional in this particular area. I, I ask myself this very question, and, you know, when I, when I look at the word intentional, being done on purpose or deliberate is the definition of it, and then I think of the laissez-faire, lazy-faire idea of how sometimes we go through life with this, well, whatever comes is going to come. It's an attitude of letting nature take its course without interfering. I want you to, when you leave here, look at what happens to the yard when you let nature take its course. When the lawnmower is broken, what happens to the yard when nature takes its course? It keeps growing and not the way I want it to grow. Well, if we just had that idea of whatever happens, happens, the weeds take over, right? It happens in the garden, it happens in our life. And so I asked myself this question, and I, I said to myself, now, how have I looked at life through the eyes of intentionality? And I realized that I was looking for this magic bullet to be a successful Christ follower. Do you ever look for that magic bullet? You're like, if I do this one thing intentionally, then I will be this perfect Christian and everything will go according to what I see in the Word of God. And so I keep looking for this holy grail, the magic bullet, that I can intentionally do and it's all going to work out great. And I can then get up and preach a sermon and say, I have the Holy Grail and the magic bullet of successfully following as being a Christ follower. And then I realize it's not there. So what does the scripture say about being intentional? I like what, uh, reading through First and Second Peter, and I encourage you, if you noticed on the reading plan, we're reading it over and over and over again, First and Second Peter, for the next two months. And this is what Peter says in, uh, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. He says, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. So that, everybody say so that. So that. While you're reading First Peter and Second Peter, and a lot of Paul's writings, I want you to circle every time you come to so that, whenever you see it. It's a cause and effect. It's an if and a then. So that by it, that's the milk of the word, you may grow up in your salvation. You may grow up in your salvation. I was looking back at pictures. This is birthday month for us. It's not just my birthday. It's both my kids' birthdays. It's my dad's birthday. It's my son-in-law's birthday. It's the dog's birthday. It's my other son's birthday. And it's a lot of birthdays. And so you know how Google, uh, which owns your life, by the way, pops up and tells you um, last year and then the year before that and seven years before that. And then you click on them and you see. And I, I clicked on the picture of my daughter uh, who turned seven this week and I looked at her when she was a baby and I looked at her now and the, all the years in between that Google told me I needed to look at and so I was looking at that remembering, trying to remember this little baby who's now this growing young woman and she's very different now than she was then then she cried a lot. She had a lot of opinions that always seemed to show up at 2 in the morning. I don't know what that was. But now I can have a conversation with her because she's a lot more mature than she was. Then she only ate milk. Now she drinks milk and eats it with a lot of cereal. 
bowl after bowl. I don't know what it is about these days. Kids think they can live off of cereal. Maybe it's just my house, but... Colossians chapter 1, verse 28 and 29, is a a word that you're going to hear. It has a so that in it again. But you're going to hear this a lot over the next year in this intentional process. But he is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, let's say it together, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. Who, who are we presenting fully mature in Christ? Yeah. Only half the people, people with September birthdays, you get to be fully mature in Christ. If you didn't make September, I'm sorry, you're out. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works within me. That's a lot of energy, folks. So that everyone may be fully mature in Christ. We're talking about a process, not a silver bullet, not a magic potion, not a holy grail. We're talking about a maturity process. Say this with me. I am in the process. I am in the process. I don't know if I'll ever write a book or not. But I do have a file on my computer that says books to write. And one of those books is bumping into the will of God. For the first half of my life, that would be 25 years and a half now. I said, God, I don't know what you want me to do, but I'm willing to do it. And I watched him put circumstance after circumstance after circumstance in my life where I bumped into the will of God. I got selected for an internship when I was a senior at Elam, where Catalina is now. And I said, uh, okay, I'm going to take this internship. It was a one-week internship in another state. It was in Maryland. And... Right before I went on this internship, the week before, my boss's son unexpectedly dies of meningitis. And I had been ministering to him. They weren't necessarily Christ followers. Um, And I'd been ministering to them, and I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to stay and be with the family and not go to the internship because I really felt like I needed to be with the family. I prayed about it, and the Lord said, no, I still want you to go to do this internship. I'm like, okay, it's only a week. I can go down, do the internship real quick. I didn't have high expectations of the internship. It was just I was selected for it, it was paid for, I'm going to go do it, and then I'm going to come back, and then I'll be on with ministry. So I went to the internship, and the last day of the internship, I'm sitting with the senior pastors, and we're on our way to the airport, and they said, we think that you should come and be our youth pastor. I mean, totally blown out of the water. Like, this was not on my radar. I'm getting on a plane, going back home, and life goes on as normal. And, And immediately the Lord speaks to me and says, this is a bump into my will. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't. I, I didn't even think I wanted to be a pastor. I wanted to be a missionary. That was my calling. Okay, I'm going to be in the end. And and immediately when they said that, I knew. And I called my wife, who wasn't my wife yet, and I said, "This is where we're going. This is what we're supposed to do." And I had no, um, uh, let's say, uh, tact in spiritual leadership in relationship yet. And we weren't married, and she immediately responds back to me. Uh, is, it was actually pretty gentle. Um, and, and she says, uh, well, if that lines up with the other things that the Lord has spoken to you that we've talked about, then okay. Now, there was something else that the Lord had said to me in the beginning of that year, and he said, wait six months after you're getting married before doing anything. That was clear as anything. I knew that. I told her that. We discussed that. And she said, either God spoke to you about that, or he didn't speak to you about this. Either way, you know, whatever. You reconcile it and let me know what he says. I'm conflicted inside because I really felt like this was God. I had bumped into the will of God, but then I also had the clear word of the Lord. And so I had to go back to to these people 
to the pastors of the church, and I had to say, look, I really feel like this is God. I bumped into it. But I also know that the Lord spoke to me and said, take six months off after graduation. Now, we got married two weeks after graduation, so that meant we had six months before we went to the church. And they said, we will hold the position for you until six months was up. Now, that bump changed my life forever. Wasn't on my radar. Wasn't anything I was looking for. It wasn't anything that I would have seen myself doing. And eventually, that bump led to another bump, led to another bump, which led me here. And there are so many things where I would see clearly the Lord just like a pinball machine, bumping me around and doing that. And so I can look at that and say, well, hey, lazy fair. Whatever happens, happens. Just let the ball bounce wherever it goes. Some of you that are planners are like, are you kidding me? And then you have the other side, which is, man, this word intentional to you, you live by intentionality. You breathe by intentionality. You have your Apple Watch set to breathe. Breathe in, breathe out. Take a drink. Breathe in, breathe out. Take a drink. You're so regimented and so scheduled that if Jesus showed up to bump you in another direction, you'd be like, oh no, Lord, surely not. Remember the tensions. Ah, lazy fair. Intentionality. Where in the scripture... Do we take this tension and balance it together? You see, if you're a bumping into the will of God type person, you probably need a little more intentionality in some areas. But I'm going to show you how I was bumping into the will of God, but I was very intentional in the things that prepared me for the bump. So let's look at 2 Peter chapter 1. Before we do that, I was reading a lot about uh, the, the rabbis. I'm reading a couple of books about the rabbis, the Jewish rabbis. And it is exciting and neat to see how our scripture was how the rabbis, even the Pharisees, that we give a bad rap to, like, oh, they're just Pharisees, prepared the way for the teachings of uh, Jesus' teachings, very much a lot based upon the, the rabbinical teachings of the day. Now, what I'm learning about this is that there were rabbis who were considered liberal rabbis. You had the moderate la rabbis, and then you had the conservative rabbis. So, if you take something to say, well, the rabbis, it would be like today, saying, well, all churches preach the same message. No, we don't. We, we have very different interpretations of some things. Same with the rabbis. But here's a rabbi, uh, Rabbi Ta uh, Tarfan, and he said, uh, The day is short, the, the labor vast, the toilers idle, the reward great, and the master urgent. Kind of sounds similar to what Jesus said, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. And this is the part I want to focus on. It is not your duty to complete the work. But neither are you free to remove yourself from it. Interesting. Truth, intention. Intentionality, but also allowing God to move us. So maybe you've thought about this from time to time. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. I got so excited when I was exegeting this passage and I was going through it and looking at it. I was like, this is it. This is intentionality in one scripture. His divine power, whose divine power? Not ours, right? His divine power has given us everything. How much? We need for a godly life. What kind of life? Through our knowledge of Him. Who? 
of him who called us by his own or by his own glory and goodness through these he has given us his very great and precious promises uh oh here's this here's this so that again through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires boy that sounds that sounds like a good life right there now verse 5 for this reason make every effort let's say that together make every effort one more time make every effort we're going to come back to that and pull that apart to add to your faith goodness to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure remember no magic potion no no magic bullet it is in increasing measure ongoing discipleship and growing to maturity from infancy when you're on the milk of the word to solid food Paul says increasing measure they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ but whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins anybody have past sins anybody been cleansed from their past sins Woo! there's present power we've talked about that a lot today there's present power over your past sins and then there is this intentional living I like those two words there two of my favorite words are effective and efficient in other words effective he says ineffective that you're not ineffective and you're not unproductive I like productivity and I like to be effective I just that's that's who I am now this word here we're gonna learn a Greek word this is your Greek word lesson okay say the word spude okay now I'm gonna use a a, uh, uh, a play on words here because we're going to be able to look at each other after we're done with this lesson and for the next year you're going to be able to say to each other it's a spoo day now the, the Greek word spoo day is not you know day but for our intents and purposes this will remind you and you shall remember this for the next year as we are intentional about this what's the word spoo-day. it's a spoo day s-p-o-o-d-a-y is the way we're going to say it okay but what is spoo day oh this is an awesome word this word where it says in the in the passage of scripture there for in verse 5 for this very reason make every effort to add and then it goes on to your faith goodness and those uh, all of those things which we'll unpack for the next year but making every effort this is what I want you to get what's the word spoo day Bob it is a spoo day okay it is a spoo day what day is it it's a spoo day it's a spoo day intentionality this there's this part of the of the word there's two words here in the in the Greek but we have the word all that takes the effort and supercharges it make every effort or some translations say all effort or make this effort all the time and so this word which says make effort is a very powerful word just in itself but when you add all in front of it it takes this to this unbelievable level 
that we get to experience because today is a? It's a spoo day. Now, this intentionality, it's, it's an extensive, intensive force in order to be a mature Christian. It's not lazy fair. There is a, a speedy diligence about doing the things that God wants you to do. It's not, ah, if it happens, it happens. If I become a mature Christian, ah, okay, great. God did a great work in me. Hallelujah. See, this is, the, this is what happens in Pentecostal uh, circles sometimes. And uh, we, we come to the altar. I love the altar, by the way. You will catch me at the altar many, many times. And, you know, I really don't care what you think. Oh, pastor has some deep sin in his life. He's probably confessing. I don't care what you think. I used to be so concerned about, ooh, if I respond to that altar call, what could people think? You know, I'm really not as bad as I know the things that they have on their life. You know, and, it, and, and I'm like, who cares? So I come to the altar. And I want an encounter with the, the God of heaven. And I come for my magic potion, or I come for my my uh, uh, what do you call it? What do you call that thing? The uh, the, the the chalice that uh, anyway, last crusade thing. Anyway, you know, why can't I think of those dumb things? So I come wanting this thing. Just lay hands on me, Pastor. I'll fix it all for you. You're going to be an instantly mature Christian. I start speaking in tongues. I give you the high five. I slap you on the head, knock you down. That's fine. And you're supposed to get up and be mature. It's not what the Word says. Now, I've been set free. I've been healed. I've been delivered. I have been touched at the altar. And I can't explain what has happened to me. And there's been experiences that have happened that I just come away saying, I don't know what happened. All I know, I've been in the presence of the Lord. And I am a different person right now than I was before. Have you ever experienced that before the Lord? Praise God for those experiences. They're real. But then I read Peter, and I look at this intense word all the time, every effort, all the time, every day, I'm pressing in, and I'm going to get this, because today is a? It's a spoo day. And tomorrow's going to be a? And the day after that's going to be a? Every day being a spoo day. day. Every effort, all the time. Now Peter and John, they were going in Acts chapter 3, they were going to the temple to pray, and they met a lame man on the way, and they healed him, and then he's walking and leaping and praising God. They were just going to the temple. God had a divine bump in their road, and they healed a man. Philip, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Philip was having a revival in Samaria. The angel comes to him and tells him to go down on the desert road. He goes down on the desert road. He meets an Ethiopian eunuch. He goes up into the chariot with him, explains the scripture to him. The guy gives his life to the Lord. He baptizes him right there. And then he sends him back to Ethiopia with the gospel. And instantly, Philip is translated, and he shows up in his Otis. Azotus. And he just bumped into the will of God. Lord, Lord, could 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 you could you maybe do that to me? Like like that cool stuff that we read about? Like I I I I you know count me in, Lord. See, we raise our hands on on the cool stuff that we want to see God do, but we don't want to be intentional about what it took to get them to the place where they could be used like that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to go through the fire. Daniel had to go through the lion's den. But they were people of prayer before the test. They were intentional in their life. This week I go, we go to pick up Boaz uh, from, the, from Paris Island, from South Carolina. And he is a Marine, a full-fledged Marine now. Praise God. <laughs> Called, called me last week and said, Dad, I'm no longer a Marine recruit. I'm a Marine. And uh, we're very proud of him on that. But you know, my son has not fought a single battle. 
He's not been in a single firefight, praise God. He has not done any of the things that he has been trained to do. You know what he knows how to do? Make his bed. Press his uniform. Run to chow. Do a march with an 80-pound rucksack on the back. That's what he knows how to do. Oh, and the drill instructors, according to him, were very sure that he intentionally did every one of those things exactly as he was supposed to do them. I said to him this week, so what are you doing? You're a Marine now, and we're not picking you up until next week. He said, we're cleaning. And we're pressing our uniforms. And we are, I'm like, well, that doesn't sound like, like shoot them up, bang them up, blow stuff up, like... Sounds very much like being at home with your mother saying, please clean your room, you know, do your chores, you know. Only I don't think you're eye-rolling the DI, you know. It's not like, oh, here we go again. It's clean. I told you it was clean, you know. That kind of thing. Intentionality in the boot camp means that when he's on the battlefield, he knows exactly what to do. Now, that's the same thing with God. If we're not intentionally doing what we need to do when it's not game day. Oh, I'm so glad I brought up game day. Thursday night was wonderful. In case you're new, I'm an Eagles fan. It wasn't pretty, but we won. Here's here's something for you. Intentional, Intentional surrender. Intentional listening. And intentional obedience are three things that every one of us need to do. I'm going to switch over to uh, this one here. All right. Just, you can just turn it off. We're good. Intentional surrender, intentional listening, and intentional obedience. Three things that you can do right now in your life. So that when you bump into the will of God, you are prepared, whether it's healing somebody, whether it's leading someone to the Lord, whether it's encouraging someone with a word from heaven, whether it's having victory over the things that so easily beset us. First of all, intentional surrender. Not my will but yours be done. God's will, God's way. I want to want God's, what God wants, whether I want it or not. Let's let's, uh, chew on that for a little little bit. I want to want what God wants, whether I want it or not. Have you ever prayed those prayers? Back to me in Bible school. God, I'll do anything but be a pastor. But I want what you want. That's like speaking out of both sides of your mouth, by the way. Like, I know I'm called to do this. I don't want to do this. So I just say, yeah, but God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And then I come to the place where I pray, God, help me want to want what you want. Help me want to want what you want. I don't want it right now, but I want what you want. So help me want to want what you want. Sounds like Paul and in uh, Romans 7. You know, what I want to do, I don't want to do. What I don't want to do, that what I do. You know, whatever your man I am. Maybe you're here today and you say, in my first step in intentionality is that complete surrender because I'm willing to say, be honest with yourself, I really don't want what I feel God wants for me right now, but I do want to want it. And God, let me pray. Help me to want what you want. Second thing, intentionally listening. Oh, man. If you've been around here a while, you know that I got taken to the hearing uh, specialist when I was a little boy because um, (laughs) my mother thought that I had hearing issues. And the doctor after that assured my mother I had no hearing issues, but I had listening issues. And it did not fare well for me after that. (laughs) Yeah, sometimes that's us. I asked a question to somebody recently, like, how, how do you hear the voice of the Lord? They looked at me and said, you know, what do, what do you mean? And so I began to unpack it a little bit, and it turned out that they hear the voice of the Lord. They just didn't know it was the voice of the Lord. 
So they were hearing something, but they were having a hard time listening to what it was. And I assured them that what they were hearing was the word of the Lord and that they could step out in faith on that because that's where God was taking them and helping them to see. I want to hear what God wants, whether I want to hear it or not. I want to hear what God wants, whether I want to hear it or not. We don't always like what God says, do we? I don't. But yet I want to hear what God wants so that I can be conformed to his image, I can line up with him, and I'm not out on my own. Heaven forbid that I would choose a path where I would be out from under God's best. Oh, Lord Jesus, please put a tight leash on me and pull me back if I ever am prone to wander in any way. Third thing, first we surrender our heart. Second, we're listening. Oh, now comes the fun part. Intentional obedience. Intentional surrender looks like this. Okay, God. Whatever you want. Intentional listening says, okay, God, I'm all ears. Intentional obedience says, my heart's there, my head's got it, and now my feet have to do it. I choose to do what God wants, whether I feel like it or not. Whew. Brian, I don't know what I don't know what we did on Friday, but my body is in incredible pain from that gym workout that we did 5:30 on on the morning. I mean, I I haven't been racked with this much pain since we did the Tough Mudder. I'm like, must have been the pull-ups. I don't know, but intentionality means you have a goal, and then you got to get out of bed and do it. Obedience. So, so what do I need to do? What do you need to do to live more intentionally this week, tomorrow, today, next year? What does it look like spiritually to live intentionally? What does it look like for you and me? Four times a week. Everybody say four times. Four times of obedience a week of being in the Scripture. Some say four, some say five. I think it's a very reasonable goal that four times a week, every person that hears my voice would be able to say, I am in the Word four or more times a week. That may be listening to it, that may be reading it, that may be a chapter, it may be a devotional, but something where you are meaningfully into the Word of God, listening to what heaven has to say to you. Statistically, three or less, it makes no difference in the way you live your life four or more, it is a it is an intentional act that puts you in a place where God can minister to you in your spirit. It seems simple, but it's really not. How much time do we spend watching Netflix? And how much time does it take to read a chapter of the Bible and sit there for 15 minutes? That seems like an incredibly long time sometimes. And you're like, that was only 15 minutes? Every single person in this room can afford 15 minutes in your life. You can. You waste more, you waste more than 15 minutes probably in your every morning. That's not in your entire day. Physically, what does it look to be intentional? Maybe a goal would be for you to say, I want to walk two miles four times a week. Many of us could do that. What does it look like emotionally? to be intentional about having a Sabbath this week. Being intentional. What does it look like relationally? Maybe it's to participate in EHR. Oh, I don't have the time to do that. But you spend hours every month arguing with people and creating strife and experiencing strife because you don't have the tools to be emotionally healthy in your relationships. Invest two hours a week for the next eight weeks and save yourself a boatload of mess in the next year. It's intentional. You don't have to do it. You can keep doing life the same way you're doing it and get the same stinking results financially. I I can tell you this. I am so glad 
that we were not in debt when my wife lost her job six months ago. There weren't any payments that had to go on hold. Just make an adjustment to life. What does it look like to intentionally take hold of your finances, maybe go through financial peace again, till you get it, till financial peace goes through you? What does it look like to be intentional for you? Intentional with relationships, intentional in your finances, intentional in your emotions, intentional in your spirit. What does intentionality look like to you? Don't be discouraged. If you're an overachiever and you're like, I tried that and it didn't work. Maybe you just need to invite the Lord into your process a little bit more because today is a what? Oh, you forgot already. You forgot what today is. Today is a? Okay. And tomorrow is a? Where we are going to be very intentional about becoming the mature Christians that God wants us to be. We cannot have a lazy fare mindset in life. It's just not going to take us where God wants us to be. Now, I want to paint a little bit of a vision of where I see we can go as an intentional church. I like this vision. Maybe you'll like it too. And then you have to ask yourself, what is it going to take for me to be a part of this vision? So if we're intentionally moving forward, what I see, if I look backwards over my shoulder, I see a place where husbands and wives are dwelling together in unity. I see a place where we worship together in diversity like heaven. Every nation, tribe, and tongue. I see a people who are victorious over sin. Somebody shout hallelujah and amen. By the true power of the word. I see disciples who make disciples. Just say that's me. Disciples who make disciples, that's me. That's me. I see Christ followers bringing hope to the hurting, the lost and the least. I see people living with laser focus for the kingdom of heaven. How will you live more intentionally this week? You see, we don't get there overnight. We don't get there by coming to the altar and receiving communion like we're going to in a minute. But it starts by surrendering. And then it excels by listening. And a long obedience in the right direction is where we come to maturity. Wherever you are on this journey today, it is a sprue day. If there's an area where God has spoken to you, and my prayer in every time the word goes forth in this place is that God would speak where I can't. God would speak to you in words that I don't even have. By his Holy Spirit, he's speaking right now. He's giving you, hmm, this is an area where I need to be more intentional. He didn't even say that. That's right, because the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. As we receive communion today, I want you to say, Lord, as I receive these elements, I'm asking you to do what I can't do. Remember how this started out? By his power, the Holy Spirit's power. But I'm also asking you to help me do what I must do and what you won't do. Two things held in tension. God, do what I can't. And help me to do what you want. Because today is a spoo day. Those that are serving communion, if you would come. And the way we're going to do this today is we'll have two stations up here. And uh, you're welcome to come. Uh, member of the church or not, we hold open communion. It's, uh, it's the body and the blood of Christ that we celebrate today with thanksgiving. Without that death, burial, and resurrection... We have no hope. But because of what we celebrate today, we all have hope. So when we come, I want you to take the elements. You can receive them. Uh, 
if you're you're here with your family or you you want to receive them alone at the at the uh, at the altar, um, you're you're welcome to just eat the bread and drink the cup as as you want. You don't have to hold them for everybody. Take them before the Lord. If you would like prayer for anything in particular, we'll have a couple of people on either side over here that would be available for prayer uh, as well. But uh, I'd like you to stand with me. And I want you to really ask yourself this question. How do I need to be intentional today? How do I need to be intentional? May the Lord reveal it. May he do his part. And may you do your part. Father, I thank you for these elements that you have provided for us the the cup which represents your blood the remission of our sin your broken body the bread which on the night you were betrayed you took and you broke and you said take and eat this do this in remembrance of me and today we do thank you and remember what you've done for us to provide even the pathway for maturity to be possible for us and Lord I bless this this cup I bless this bread and I thank you that today you are giving us the the ability to receive your intentionality do what we can't help us to surrender help us to listen and help us to be obedient We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Come as you're ready. Receive the elements. And receive the power and the strength of God. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Amazing love. Now flowing down from hands and feet that were nailed to the tree. His grace flows down and covers me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, amazing love. Now flowing down from hands and feet that were nailed to the tree, His grace flows down and covers me, it covers me. How sweet the sound, amazing love, now flowing down from hands and feet that were nailed to the tree. As grace flows down and covers me, it covers me. Grace covers me. It covers me. Grace covers me.
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, amazing love, now flowing down from hands and feet that were nailed to the tree. His grace flows down and covers me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, amazing love, now flowing down from hands and feet that were nailed to the tree, as grace flows down and covers me, it covers It covers me, it covers me, grace covers me. So here's your classwork. Before you leave today, I want to challenge you. I was going to call it homework, but it's not homework. It's classwork. I, I want you to share with somebody something that you need to be more intentional with. So I'm going to start. And then I'll pass the microphone over. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, now, I recognize this in my life that I can encourage everybody else but my family. So I need to be more intentional about encouraging my family. And you can do this because today is a may the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious to you shine his countenance upon you and give you his peace amen and amen today is your spoo day <laughs>